Hi YouTube, so welcome back to the second part of the Volvo compactor build. In the first episode I painted all the parts and I assembled a few of them. I've added a clear coat to all the parts. Now they are much shinier and will look a lot better. Yeah, you can see. Here's the hood. Yeah. <laughs> now I'll just let this paint dry. Uh, this shouldn't take long. The the clear coat that I use usually sets within 20 or 30 minutes. In this episode I will begin assembling the compactor and this is some of the hardware that I will be using. Now I will begin showing you the motor that I'm using for the rear wheels. Now this is a dual uh, axle motor which means it's got axles on both sides right here. Inside the drum I have a dry motor which is this one it's a 37 rpm motor. Now usually when you build one of these you want this one to have the same rpm as the dry motor for the rear wheels. Now unfortunately mine uh, they don't have the same rpm but they're close enough. And this is the the vibration motor that I will be putting inside the drum. Uh, this one is a 4000 rpm vibration motor and these motors they come in two uh, variants. Uh, the difference is the heads right here. Now this head is called a vector head and this one also comes with another head. I don't remember its name uh, but I think maybe both of them will fit. I'm not sure though. Uh, the files are made for the vector head, this head right here. And I will be using this servo for the steering. Uh, this is a 20 kilo uh, JX servo. Now I don't know if 20 kilos will be enough, but we'll see. I use these servos in all my trucks and I'm happy with that. <laughs> of course, the trucks have smaller wheels to operate, but that's I have good faith in this servo, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, this is my receiver that I will be using. It's just a 6 channel because this compactor only has uh, three functions. And these are the ESCs that I'm using for this build. Uh, these are the 1060 ESCs. Now, I'm very happy with these ESCs, so I can recommend them. This one will be for the drive wheels here and inside the drum and this one is for the vibration motor right here and here's the tires that I will be using <laughs> and you might notice that it's four of them right here but I will only be using two of them now this is a four pack that I bought from Injora on Aliexpress they are very cheap tires and they are perfect for a compactor Anyway, that's enough blabbering for me. Uh, let's begin the build.
Okay, so I gotta explain something. Um, on my builds, I always tell you to remove uh, these red wires on all ESCs except one. Now this red wire right here, it gives power to the receiver. So you only need one of them uh, because, and this is important, if you are running different brand ESCs, they might have different power values to this red wire. Some of them have 4.8 volts and some might even have 6 volts. And if they are different, uh, your receiver will go bad because of it. Uh, when you are using the same uh, brand ESCs, usually this is okay, but you also have a little variety in the power output on them as well. So I always remove the red wire on every single ESC except for one uh, because I want to uh, keep my receiver safe as safe as possible. So I'm going to remove this red wire right here now. Usually I pluck them out. You just take a knife and just pull this out. But since I'm not going to be using this ESC on anything else, I'm just going to cut it. It's so much quicker. So here we go. I have one ESC with the red wire in and the other ESC without the red wire. And if I had more ESCs, I would remove the red wire on all of them, except for this one. Oh, and by the way, uh, the reason I'm soldering the electronics this early in this build is because I have a servo here. And before I install it, I have to make sure that it is centered. And the only way to do this is to plug this into a receiver. Or if you have a servo tester, which I don't, uh, you have to plug it into something to make it self-center. Because otherwise we won't be able to uh, mount uh, the, the servo arm correctly. So I'm going to do that right now. Because once uh, everything is installed on this plate, the servo will sit on this plate. And when everything is installed, like this is the chassis, you got the servo sitting in here, you can't reach the servo arm. And that's why I gotta put this in place now. This is the way. So before I plug into the servo, I gotta bind up this uh, receiver to my transmitter. And I put the bind plug into the bind port on the receiver and and I'll put the ESC that powers the receiver into a random port like this. And put the transmitter right here. We plug into the battery and this receiver will blink fast. Now I've taped over it, silly me. You can see that it's blinking quite fast in there. So that means that it's in bind mode. So I'm going to system and RX bind. So it says it's binding okay. You plug out this one. You don't have to turn anything off, just plug it out. And now you're good to go. Now this is the moment where I will self-center the, the servo. I'm going to plug it in now. There you go. So it centered itself to the zero position and now I can mount it up into the chassis. Oh, and by the way, uh, when you plug in the servo, don't mount it in the bind port because that's not going to self-center the servo, I think. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> anyway, let's move on with the build.
So as you can see, I have the flat spot pay, uh, pointing upwards and it should be pointing downwards so that I can attach these to the motor. Now in order to spin this motor around, uh, I can't use any pliers because this motor has a lot of resistance. So, so I'm just going to plug uh, the battery onto these motor wires right here and it will spin to where I want it. Now, uh, if you do this, be careful though. Uh, you don't want to short out the battery. There we go. So the flat spot is now pointing downwards. So I made a mark to where the set screw will hit the motor axle. So I'm going to create a groove here now so that the set screw digs down into it and the wheel hub won't come off. So I'm going to install the tires to the rims now um, and on this build you can use lesso tires if you want. Now these are scale looking uh, nice tires but they are expensive and I will be using these uh, cheap crawler tires for my build. Now these are 1.9 uh, inch tires but they have a outside diameter of around 114 millimeters. So the wheels are mounted up and the next thing I should do is test if both motors, I mean inside the drum and the rear wheels motor, if they both spin in the same direction. I'll test that now before I solder the electronics. Now in order to test this I just plug the wires for the motor straight onto the battery and take note which direction it spins. Now I plug the red wire into the red wire on the battery. So this spins forward when I plug it this way. And now let's do the same on the rear wheels and see if they spin the same way. So the rear wheels, they spin the other direction, which means that when I connect these two together, I will have to plug the red wire from the drum motor onto the black wire on the rear wheels in order to make them spin the correct way. So here's what I just did. I put a heat shrink tube over the wires to uh, make them look better. And then I used the steel wire to make uh, kind of clamps if you want. 
Yeah. So I'll be preparing the ESCs for soldering now onto the motors. And before I begin, I'll remove these tabs. You can see the ESC says LiPo. You want to keep the LiPo because we are using a LiPo battery on this. And the other tab, you just completely re uh, remove it like this one. Oh, well, that's not concerning at all. <laughs> Sometimes uh, you get poor products from China and this is one of them, I guess. I'll just glue it in place. Now that we have removed the tabs, you can cut off these motor uh, connectors because I will not be using them. So I'm going to solder the motors onto the ESCs now and I'll walk you st uh, step by step through this process. And I'll try to keep things as simple as possible. So we'll begin with the drive motors. Now this is the wires for the motor inside the drum. And we'll just put heat shrink on it right away so that we don't forget. <laughs> like so. And as you can see the wires for the rear motor they are very short, so we are going to extend them a bit. I'm going to put heat shrink on those as well. There we go. And I have my helping hand right here. So now that we have extended the wires for this motor, we can attach the wires to the ESC. Now this is the front drum motor and we will attach this like so. But we also want the rear motor into this, let's see here, I'm going to Cut it right there. And remember, uh, when I tested the motors, I had to swap them around. I mean, uh, I had to swap the wires around in order to make them go the same direction. So the black wire from the rear motor will join the red wire for the front motor. like this. So now the drive motors are connected to this ESC right here. And now we will connect the drum vibration motor, which is these wires. They will go on to this ESC.
So now that the drum vibration has been mounted onto the ESC, I can uh, plug in the receiver and test all the functions and see if everything works uh, the way it should. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a dancing compactor right here. Now this is why I don't use servos on most of my builds. This just looks so wrong, but luckily there's a easy fix. I have a tip for you guys. Uh, this right here is... Wait, I'll open the package. So this right here is a servo slowdown module. Uh, Basically what this does is it slows down the movements on your servo. Now I'm going to plug this in and I'll show you the difference. So I have plugged in the servo slowdown module and I'll show you what happens when I turn. Much, much better. And I also have another tip for you. Uh, if you don't like uh, quick acceleration, quick de deceleration like this, you can also install one of these modules on your ESC. So I'll do that and show you how this works. So now I install the servo slowdown module on my ESC and this is what happens. You kind of get some, some sort of inertia uh, or weight uh, to the machine. It it feels more realistic in my opinion. Uh, and these servo slowdown modules, they are super cheap. You buy them on AliExpress and you can put them in the compactors, the loaders or the dumpers, whatever you like. Uh, it will slow down the movements a lot and things will look a lot better. Anyway guys, that's unfortunately all I could do today. Uh, I would like to assemble the cabin and the hood but that's going to be in the next episode because <laughs> I ran out of time. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And also, if you like watching stuff like this, please hit the subscribe button. It helps me a lot. And yeah, that's all. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.